Conspiracy theories thrive on the internet, but what happens when they make the jump from the online world to the one we live in? Last week's terrifying incident at a Washington restaurant is a case in point. 28-year-old Edgar Welch read an outlandish story online that the pizzeria was harboring young children as sex slaves, part of an abuse ring led by Hillary Clinton. Of course, that story was fake. But Welch allegedly showed up armed at the pizzeria, fired an assault rifle, and now faces felony charges. Joining us from Miami with more is Joseph Parent. He is a professor of political science at the University of Miami and co-author of American Conspiracy Theories. And in studio, we are joined by CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Good morning to you both. Joe, let me start with you. In an interview yesterday, the executive editor of the New York Times, Dean Baquet, said he wished he had paid attention to fake news more closely, that he had taken it more seriously. When you read this story for the first time, were you surprised by the traction it gained? Uh, frankly, I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often. There are a lot of people, in fact, a majority of Americans believe in some conspiracy theory or another. And with 320 million people, it only takes a small number of people who really believe this to act on it. Why do people believe in conspiracy theories like this, Joe? Uh, there's a complex number of factors that contribute to this, but it seems to be that generally people independent of party um, believe in conspiracy theories or are more prone to believe in conspiracy theories and other people are just less prone to believe in conspiracy theories and that makes sense you want people to be very sensitive to threats and you want other people to be less sensitive to threats and something in between ricky a young man showed up at a pizzeria actually several several blocks from where i grew up in washington dc people were scared is there legal recourse in this age when you have real world repercussions like the ones we saw this week not too much, I'm sorry to say. Let's look at what happened at the pizzeria. Well, obviously, when someone shoots off a gun, we are very glad that no one else was injured or killed. Of course, you could have repercussions against the shooter. But what happens when something like this starts online? If you have a direct threat, like we did with the Sandy Hook deniers, when someone threatens a parent that you're going to die, that's a direct threat. Mm -hmm. That can be prosecuted because someone's posted that on the internet. But when it comes time for going criminally first, let alone civilly, after a website or provider, it's just not going to happen. And I even mean civilly. Let's look at uh, the analogy. We used to say in the world of free speech that it was okay to have, of course, the uh, First Amendment that we cherish, but you couldn't yell fire in a crowded theater because that's a clear and present danger. That's the same thing as a threat. But when you get to what Joe is talking about, the conspiracy theories that abound, there's not much you can do. Wow. Joe, is a conspiracy theory or f fake news, do, do they have, do they gain more credibility when someone connected to authority essentially perpetuates it? Absolutely. In fact, that's one of the best uh, reasons that conspiracy theory spread is that it's, um, since conspiracy theories aren't partisan in nature, uh, they tend to be contained because people are just as likely on the left as the right to believe in conspiracy theories, but people on the left tend to believe bad things about people on the right and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So generally, the, the best predictor of conspiracy theories are the party of the president, and now that we have a Republican in office, we expect there to be a lot more conspiracy theories coming from the left. Joe, can I ask, what is the best way to dispel a conspiracy theory? Um, to be kind and, and patient and uh, understanding of people's perspectives. Uh, I think a lot of these people, the harder you try to dispel it, the more backfiring there is and the more they want to believe it because they think that you're part of the plot and you're trying to uh, manhandle their beliefs. But if you listen to them and you try and reason with them and you ask them to maybe apply the same standards of evidence to this belief that they do to other beliefs, um, I think that's probably the best way to help people uh, have at least an exchange of ideas, and maybe you'll convince some people some of the time. All right, Joseph Parent, Ricky Kleeman, thank you both very much for being with us this morning.